Daily Broadside, day 576. I went up to the mountains this past weekend, explored around a bit, did some urban spelunking. With the uh, permission of a friend of a friend, I got to go visit the uh, abandoned theme park in Maggie Valley, ghost town in the city, ghost town, ghost village in the sky, whatever it's called now. Ghost Town Village, I think, was the most recent name for it. And, uh, I got to tell you, man, I am uh, I'm so disheartened by the fact that everything's all caught up in court and it's all money and they, people can't get their head out of their ass and manage something properly because they've got a gym on their hands, man. That place is just a gold mine. And uh, it's sad that it's just in such ruins because although a lot of the infrastructure is still there, there's a lot of things that need to be brought up to code. It would have to be uh, a lot of money spent for that thing to come back around. But nevertheless, almost 5,280 feet in the sky. Where else do you have a theme park? You know, there's just so many possibilities and everything. And with the Wild West theme, you got a lot of things you can play off cliche-wise, you know, naming rides and events and shows and activities and entertainment and everything. But uh, I got up Saturday morning. I stayed in a tiny house, all right? This is the first time I've ever stayed in a tiny house. You know what the stupidest attraction from staying in a tiny house is? Um, and it was nice. I mean, it was quiet. I couldn't get the two mini splits to agree with one another. So it was, it was either you know Dante's Inferno is uh, the third ring of hell, or it was you know a, um, an ice chest. Um, but other than that, um, I think that the biggest attraction to those things is the fact that you're too close to the TV. You know, and I'm not used to having a TV. It's much like when I was in the hospital a few weeks ago. I was like, oh, I got a TV. And then I realized that I just don't care that much about TV. And when I was in the hospital, all I watched was like a, a, a series of like 10 hours off and on of a uh, Naked and Afraid. I gotta tell you, if I was on Naked and Afraid and they put some girl in there with no ass, I'd have a talk with the producers because I'd have to have something to keep me going for 28 days or whatever it is you gotta do, 32 days, I can't remember. But nevertheless, uh, at the tiny house, all I watched was a uh, supermarket suite just happened to be what was on when I flipped the TV on. I was like, hey, look, this takes us right back to the 90s. All the all the women had like shoulder pads and bobbed haircuts and it was just so 90s, right? It was like straight out of 1992. I'm David Rupert and this is Supermarket Sweep. So I'm watching Supermarket Sweep. <clears throat> really a dumb show. I feel like, uh, much like Nickelodeon's, uh, what was that slime show uh, with Mark Summers? I feel like those two, I could just dominate those games right off the bat. You know, I probably couldn't go on American Ninja Warrior and win it the first time out, but I could damn sure uh, destroy Supermarket Sweep and that slime show on Nickelodeon. Um, I got, you can't do that on television in my head, and that's not what it is. It was, uh, I don't know, where you gotta like pick a booger out of a big nose, you get flags at the end, you little obstacle courses on crap, and then you're like, but anyway, I'm watching Supermarket Sweep, and man, what? Like, you know what I don't like about that show the most? It, it, this drove me nuts. Is the fact that all four wheels turn on the on the shopping carts. They've made it to where you can just basically spin those things down the aisle. That's not accurate. That you got to be able to you got to screw screw screw. You know you got to you got to drift that thing around the corners. And if you slam into somebody, then you slam into somebody. You know, uh, I didn't care for that. Uh, what am I talking about? Um, oh, so you're too close to the TV, right? in the uh the tiny house and i know it says tiny in the in the name and it implies that, that everything's small but that is a, a it's weird when you're like you know seven feet from a tv screen that's you know 55 inches large but saturday morning i get up go to a pancake house right go to the pancake house and i had already i was checking out where i wanted to go because we we're going to the casino right after breakfast and uh, so we're, we're going to Cherokee, North Carolina. And I'm looking around for pancake houses, and there were only a, you know, a couple options. And I'm looking online at the menu, right? And the menu is like, um, you know, Big John's uh, hot cake stack. And then it describes what it is. You know, three uh, bountiful uh, pancakes full of butter and syrup and blah, blah, blah. And they're describing it, and I'm like, it's a pancake. Why do I need this described? And then it goes into like five egg omelet and you're like and the description underneath is like five of the greatest farm fresh eggs turned into a fluffy omelet with your choice of buttered biscuit and blah and it goes all this stuff and then it gets to uh huevos enrique right and i'm like oh that sounds good it's like uh huevos rancheros right and i'm like and there's no description <laughs> i no one knows and i so I, I i'm like well maybe i'm the dumb one so i go to google 
There's no such thing as Huevos Enrique. It's obviously named after someone who worked there or works there or a friend of the you know, the proprietor. I don't know. But nobody knows what Huevos Enrique is. And when I get there, it's on the menu. But it, it was like, you know, just typical Southwestern omelet. But anyway, I say that to say this. I go to a pancake house the next day in Maggie Valley, one of which I had been to before, and um, stop for the school bus, let the children out. And um, while I'm, uh, I get there and I order pancakes and then an omelet, and uh, because their pancakes were very good from all the tables that I saw walking by, you know how you check out other people's food and you're like, Ooh, uh, you're like, mm, I see that, I got you, I see you, I see you. All right, so I order pancakes and I got like, they were awesome. It had ricotta. It had uh, elderberries and like blueberries, and then it had a uh, orange marmalade. It was phenomenal. And the lady asked me, Sabrina, she says, uh, do you need syrup? And I'm like, yes, I need syrup. Why well, just order pancake? I didn't say that, but this is what I'm thinking. I'm like, I've never been asked if I need syrup when you order pancakes. I'm like, are people out here eating dry pancakes? I was like, these things gotta be phenomenally moist and awesome for them not to need syrup. Joke's on me. They come out and there was so much like compote on top of the, the pancakes that I just dove right in. They looked amazing. And it was one of the best pancakes I've ever had. Uh, and so, I'm, and, and then I, I get halfway through the things and I'm like, damn, I haven't even eaten any syrup. I feel bad because I made her bring it to the table, you know? And then I'm sitting next to some people and I don't even know what happened, right? But I love the conflict when it, it occurs. And they were all freaking mad because their biscuits and gravy came out hot, or a game came out cold, and then they put butter on the toast. They, she, there was like three or four things that that um, that got all mad. So it was like a, an adult man, a little boy, a teenager, a teenage girl, and then two adult women. The adult man goes back behind the counter, gets like a couple to-go boxes, boxes up him and his son's food, and goes and stands in the parking lot. And I'm watching, I'm, I'm just, I'm fascinated. I'm like, what are we doing here? They're complaining and everything, everybody's mad, but then the, the rest of the family just keeps eating their food and he's taking half of it off their plates and he's standing at, standing in the parking lot, not in a car, just standing in the parking lot with these two to-go months for like 20 minutes, because they're still eating. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? I don't understand. Like on the one hand, don't be a dick, man. Like they're busy, but at the same time, if you're gonna be as busy as this place is, I mean, there's a 30 minute wait to get in this joint, right? If you're gonna be that busy and you're gonna bring in like 20 grand every morning, uh, you know, serving pancakes, make sure everything's fresh and hot. Don't be back there making like a stack of hotcakes, you know, a foot high and just throwing them on a plate and then sending them out. You gotta throw some love in there. You can't just uh, make stuff, you know, happen that way. But nevertheless, I love a good pancake house, although it is annoying. I mean, I paid like $14 for that, uh, for that set of pancakes. And all, although it was the best set of pancakes I've ever had, you know, there's something about $13 for flour, milk, and eggs. Uh, you know, it just, and when you think about it and you dissect it, it's, it's a little bit of a, a gouge and it kind of annoys you. But then you're like, damn, they were so good. And they didn't need syrup. Get it.